So you probably ask yourself, as I do, what will be the next big wave, big breakthrough in artificial intelligence? And at NVIDIA, we strongly believe that uh, this next uh, wave of AI will be actually physical AI. So yeah, let's, let's get physical. Okay, so we, we have witnessed in the recent years many of those paradigm shifts already. We started with perception AI, basically all those models for pattern recognition, image recognition, speech recognition, machine translation. Then we moved into a generative AI era with this huge boom of large language models, image generation models, uh, and uh, models that are actually capable of creating new content. And now we are witnessing the agentic AI uh, genesis with those autonomous systems that are actually capable of um, thinking about uh, the situation, reasoning, acting on their own, and uh, process things completely autonomously or maybe with very little human intervention. But the next interesting step will be when we actually will go to physical AI, when those autonomous systems will move into our physical world and will start interact, reason, think about our physical world around us and actually uh, interact physically with this world. It is actually happening already in a way. You probably all have heard about smart facilities like factories or warehouses. Of course, you know about uh, autonomous vehicles, humanoid robots, uh, robotic arms. We are even talking about smart cities now. So a whole city acting as one autonomous smart system. And uh, yeah, we can improve safety, we can improve traffic, we can improve so many things in the physical world. But it is a very hard task. So we are not there yet, we are just starting in this space, and there is a lot of work to do. So this is going to be the topic of today's talk. So you need many different components to actually build those physical AI systems. It's actually one word for many different things. And today we are going to focus on one specific aspect of physical AI, which is physical world understanding. So, of course, many of you are familiar with vision language models. They completely transform the way we do uh, uh, vision processing, computer vision. So we went from very simple recognition models to actual descriptions of complex scenes in natural language. So it's a huge paradigm shift. But uh, base vision language models still lack the capacity of understanding very complex scenes or maybe scenarios that require multi-step reasoning. And this is why we built Cosmos Reason. Cosmos Reason is a vision language model for reasoning grounded in physical world. So we teach the model to understand not just the scene, but the rules of physical world around us and uh, basic physical laws, understand it intuitively like a human does. Again, for those of you who are familiar with uh, vision language models, uh, just a quick uh, intro into uh, the architecture. Uh, so vision language model combines two different modalities, text represented as text tokens, embedded text tokens, and uh, vision image or video that passes through vision encoder and then projected into the same vector space as text tokens. And then oh, those different types of tokens are actually uh, 
given as input to a very large language model that is capable of understanding and processing those two different modalities. So, uh, the base LLM for Cosmos is uh, actually a Quen model with seven billion parameters. So, you're probably all familiar, many of you are familiar with this model. But the actual secret source, where the magic actually happens, and I shouldn't be saying secret because it's actually open, <laughs> so it's not secret, but it's a very important ingredient. And um, this ingredient is the post-training of the model. And for this post-training, we carefully curated physical AI data sets. So this is very important to actually give the model the ability to understand the world around us the way we understand it. And I'm going to talk about those data sets a little bit in more detail. So the first step for, for this post-training is um, supervised fine-tuning, full supervised fine-tuning of the model. And for that, we used what we call physical AI, AI data. And there are three types of such data. The first type is physical common sense reasoning. Another type is embodied reasoning. And then what we call intuitive physics. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each of this type of data. So for physical common sense, you can think of it as actually understanding the physical world around us intuitively as a human being would do. So we collected uh, vision question answering pairs with very detailed video captions and a long chain of thought traces. And it is very important that the questions that you provide actually should be answerable only with this long chain of thought sequence, not just from the video itself directly or from uh, the caption, because we want to teach the model how to reason about the data and about the situation. Then the embodied reasoning is the data set that gives the model the ability to actually uh, go from simple understanding of the situation, passive understanding of the situation, to active reasoning about the situation. What should I do next, basically? So here we work on the data set that teaches the model to predict the next action for different uh, embodiments of robots, for example, or to verify the task completion. And finally, intuitive physics data set, it is something that uh, teaches the model to understand the laws of physical world. So very important is the uh, space continuity, for example. So the model learns how to solve special puzzles to uh, understand how the space is organized. The other aspect is temporal continuity, understand this arrow of time that the time only moves in one sense and uh, understand the uh, uh, sequence of events in the video. And uh, the third thing that we uh, think about when we talk about intuitive physics is the object continuity. So uh, the model should understand that the object actually doesn't disappear because, uh, for example, it is hidden behind another object temporarily. So, as a human being, uh, the model should understand that the objects continue to exist in this situation. So, the next step in post-training is reinforcement learning. And here, the challenge for physical AI is actually the fact that uh, it is not obvious how to assign the reward for the model when we talk about physical AI. When we talk about mass-solving problems, for example, or coding problems. The answer and the reward is uh, deterministic. It is uh, rule-based. So we wanted to build something similar for physical AI. And that is where we uh, actually took samples from the reasoning data set that we constructed. And we converted them into multiple choice questions with just one single correct answer. And this gives 
as the ability to assign the rewards to the model. This data set was really very carefully curated uh, because it really requires a human in the loop to uh, ensure the quality of the data. So the uh, question should be free from the answer, of course, but it also should be free from any instruction uh, ambiguity. So it's uh, the construction of this data set is actually time consuming. And both data sets are available freely on Hugging Face. So if you want to start experimenting with, the, with, with this data, it is available for you on Hugging Face. So I will be talking a little bit about the results. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I will be talking about the results. So here you can see the uh, uh, output of previous generation of a vision language model built by NVIDIA that didn't have those reasoning and physical understanding capabilities and Cosmos Reason. So Cosmos Reason is actually able to construct this chain of thought reasoning and understand what is happening in the video but even more importantly, how it is happening, why it is happening, the order of the events, the, uh, the uh, cause and effect. So uh, it's actually a much more useful output than just the description from a base language model or vision language model. So the model itself is also open source. It's customizable. Uh, it's uh, licensed for any kind of use, commercial, and uh, also uh, any kind of research use, of course. It's a relatively compact model, only 7 billion parameters. So it, uh, it is very, very well suited for, for example, edge deployment or robot deployment. And it is right now on top of physical reasoning leaderboard on Hugging Face, so it's a really good model. Uh, okay, and finally, I'm going to talk about uh, some use cases that we identified for this model. Uh, imagine you have, of course, a wide variety of different use cases you could apply it, but we identified actually three workflows, three use cases that our customers are most interested in. So the first is data curation and annotation, then robot planning and reasoning, and video analytics. So I'm going to dive a little bit into each of those use cases. So the data curation and annotation is never fun, but <laughs> it is necessary. We all know the rules, garbage in, garbage out. So uh, we work a lot on this, uh, on this stage at NVIDIA. And you imagine you have a lot of video data that can be very heterogeneous, can come from different sources, and you want uh, to build this data into an actual high-quality training data set. And for that, you need a very powerful state-of-the-art vision language model as a backbone for your annotations. So we actually use Cosmos Reason model as this backbone for our own data processing pipeline, which is called Cosmos Curator. And uh, we use it at two different steps. At annotation steps, uh, where the model actually provides captions for the video, very detailed, very informative captions that can be embedded and stored in a vector database. And then Cosmos can also be used as a da data critic. So basically, when you have videos that come from very different sources, and some of them could be uh, synthetically generated. So you don't know the quality of your videos. You can use the same model as a critique to understand uh, if your videos are actually uh, physically uh, possible, physically uh, uh, grounded. So here's an example of how the uh, Cosmos Reason can be used for data annotation to generate those dense captions with time steps that can be uh, further used in any uh, downstream tasks. 
And here's an example how the model can be used for data critiquing. So you can see on the video that uh, this is obviously a synthetic video generated uh, by another artificial intelligence model. And you can see the car driving through a tree and just jumping back on the road, uh, which is, of course, not physically accurate. And the uh, Cosmos Reason model can actually uh, reason through this scenario, understand that it's not physically accurate, and flag it so you can filter out those low-quality videos. The second use case is uh, robot planning and reasoning. Uh, so here, nowadays, the robots, uh, the manipulator robots, are powered usually by two AI systems. The first is vision language, uh, vision language model, where you have uh, as input the video of previous actions and uh, some instructions for uh, further actions. And the model analyzes uh, the video and the text, the instruction, and produces action plan for the next steps. And uh, the important thing here is that Cosmos Reason uh, is capable of processing complex, unseen scenarios, because the holy grail in robotics is actually uh, not just provide the next plausible action, but uh, provide the next plausible action for those scenarios where the environment can be changing, the situation can be changing, a lot of things can be changing. So physical understanding is important to provide those next action predictions that are really grounded in physical understanding of the world. And those action plans can then be passed as input to action model that will actually translate those action plans into the movements of the robot. And uh, the final use case is video analytics. So you can use Cosmos Reason. Imagine you have a lot of video data. It can be streaming data from some cameras you installed, or it can be uh, just video archives that you want to analyze. You have a lot of data and you don't want to manually watch the content, but you still want to gain some useful insights about your data. This is where Cosmos Reason can also help. Uh, basically, uh, you can summarize the uh, contents of your video using Cosmos Reason, or you can create some live alerts if it's a streaming situation, where you actually uh, flag some anomalies maybe in your data or something some events that are important to you. Uh, so, all of those uh, workflows, the three workflows that I just described, are available as NVIDIA Blueprints. Blueprint, uh, you can think of it as a reference architecture, reference workflow with uh, reference code that is also freely available open source on GitLab, uh, sorry, GitHub, <laughs> and uh, you can download those blueprints and start developing your own application with them. Those are not applications that you install out of the box. They are more like inspiration and starting point for your own work, for your own application. So I think the call to action for me is really simple. Get started with uh, NVIDIA open source uh, software stack. The best place to do it is on build.nvidia.com website, where we showcase all of our models, all of our blueprints. You can find Cosmos Reason there, of course. It is available as a downloadable NIM container, but it's also available on Hugging Face as a checkpoint that you can use uh, for your own work. So, Take the models, take the data sets, take the blueprints, and start developing your own amazing physical AI application. Thank you very much. Thank you.